Hello and welcome back to my second channel. Today we're going to do a deep dive into the latest tutorial that I made, the mechanical robot man creature dude. It's just one of those projects that I started working on and I didn't really plan anything and it ended up looking like this and then I'm super happy with the end result. He's using mocap to walk around and inspect himself and I, yeah, I'm actually really happy about this. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do he said, I'm going to take you through every single step on how to make this. If you watch the tutorial on the main channel, you might notice that I was trying to keep it a little bit shorter and more enjoyable for everyone to watch. But in this video, we're just going to go through every single thing. I'm, in fact, I'm actually going to start over with a completely new blend file and I'm just going to create the entire animation from start to finish. I just want to transfer the information. I don't want to be like super uh, algorithmic. Yeah, this is a non-algorithmic video. That's what I'm trying to say. So I've made a little list of what we need. We're going to need bolts, nuts, uh, gear, uh, one gear, I think, and a spring. Uh, it's probably better that you see it like this. We're going to need some metal parts. We're going to need a procedural material and we're going to need some motion capture. So you can see here it's moving around. And the cool part about everything that I just listed up is that all of those are free or it's possible to get all of that for free. I have uh, designed this tutorial to only use free parts. That's, whole, that's sort of the point with this. So first we're going to get the bolts. So let's go to preferences in Blender. We are in version 3.4.1 and let's go to add-ons and let's just search for bolt. And you will get this add-on, which is called bolt factory. So now you can go shift A and just bolt and you will get these uh, seven meter tall bolts. <laughs> this thing is going to need a little bit of tweaking. So we can set it to Phillips, for example, and then we can do a bit diameter. The biggest problem with this is that you can right click and you can set the shading to smooth, but these edges will always be super hard. Like you can go to the modify properties and add a bevel modifier if you like. It just doesn't work. There's something happening inside this mesh. I think it's the transition from screw like right here, it's meeting in a really narrow angle, which just makes the bevel modifier not work. And it also just doesn't work with a subdivision surface. It looks really weird. So um, this is one of those things that, I mean, if you have the mechanical creature kit, <laughs> you should probably use that instead. So yeah, there are some limitations, but these are going to be quite small. So we're going to scale them down. But here's a really cool part. If you go Shift D and duplicate this, you can right click, change bolt, and now, can change this to nut for example and uh, yeah really powerful stuff right click shade it to all those auto smooth so now we have bolt and we have a nut okay next up is gears so let's go to edit preferences we're going to search for extra objects add mesh extra objects so now you can go shift a and you can go down to gears and you can simply make a gear. You can sort of just change the settings that you want here. So the number of teeth or you can change the radius. The reason why I'm adding these objects to the scene right now is because for creativity, I feel like it really helps to just see what you have available. So here we have this bolt, we have nut, we have a nut. Is it called a nut? It just sounds so weird. <laughs> At least we have these two things and then we also have the gear. And Right away, my brain is starting like, well, perhaps we could do the thing with the... You know, I'm starting to th get ideas and I just really l like to, to have that working in the background, you know? You're multi-threading with your CPU brain and you're just adding some tasks to just go in the background. Okay, so what more do we need? We need a spring. Let's go back to preferences. We're going to add curve, extra objects as well. Okay, so now we can go Shift A, we can go Curve, Curve Profiles, Helix 3D. And this will create a helix. I think it's the end angle. If we set this to, for example, 720. Yeah, so we're going to increase this a lot. I want to do 3600, maybe even more actually, 7200. Yeah, okay, and then you can just increase the resolution. Okay, nice. And now these are, you can see how sharp these angles are. So let's change the output curve type from poly to bezier. Let's lower this. So let's give this some geometry. Let's go to object data properties, geometry and you can hold on shift and you can increase the depth. Okay, so we're going to need some metal parts. We are actually going to just use the free version of my mechanical creature kit, which is available on Blender Market. So just choose the $0 free starter kit. And right here on my screen right now, it says that it's not for commercial use, but uh, this is stupid. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to remove this thing. So as of 
this video being published, the free starter kit in the Mechanical Creature Kit is cleared for commercial use. I just realized one morning that it's uh, it's weird. I just put this there because everyone else did it, you know? You can purchase and you can download. I think you have to make an account, but I mean, it's great to have an account in Blender Market because they often have sales and stuff like that. And now inside of Blender, change this to the Asset Browser, and I'm gonna change this from Current File to Mechanical Creature Kit Free. You can use whatever you want from here, but what I want is that I want this joint, scale this up, and I want uh, the bracket. And what's really cool about the Mechanical Creature Kit is that it includes a procedural metal material. So now you go down to material preview. Here you can see you have this material. So if you like, you can just select everything, control L and link material to the highlighted one. And now you can see these bolts are uh, not looking good. That's because these bolts are so big. So what you can do is you can just press control A and apply scale and they will look good. So let's just apply the scale for these and even for these as well, I think. Oh, let's change the bevel. So let's increase the bevel again. Shoop. I think that's good. And let's uh, make this thicker. And uh, let's uh, increase the bevel. And we'll also be using the bar. So let's import that as well. I'll scale everything down right now, but let's get back to the scale because uh, we're going to be changing this when we get the mocap in anyways. Let's go to mixamo.com. If you have an Adobe account, you can log in here. And I'm just going to search for look around. I think it's this one. Yeah, this is it. I really like this. It's such a cool way to sort of inspect stuff, you know? Let's click download here. The format is good. Frames per second is good. Keyframe reduction, I have no idea what that means. And now let's just click download. So now you can just go F4, import FBX, and the default settings are good. Import FBX. Okay, nice. If you got with the mesh like I did, you can just X and delete this. And now when you press play, you got this. Amazing. You got this. The entire workflow is actually surprisingly straightforward. All we have to do is that we have to just select the mocap, go to object data properties and set it to rest position. You can just start lining these things up. So let's say you want a spring to be placed like in the back. You want to place the leg here and then maybe some stuff here and here. So that is the basically the process now going forward. It's just to duplicate the parts that we have, maybe go into edit mode and do some stuff like this and basically place all these hard surface parts on each bone. I think I want to start with these ones, uh, these joint objects. And actually I want to change the armature from, in the viewport display, I want to change it from octahedral to stick. Yeah, stick is best. Let me actually do something that I forgot to do the last time. Select this and I'm gonna go shift S, hold down shift S and select cursor to selected. And then you go back to object mode by pressing tab and right click set the origin to 3D cursor. So now this guy is gonna rotate around the 3D cursor and that it makes it a lot easier to place it, rotate it, scale it up. And also what you can do is you can select one of these bones. So let's say I wanna do this bone and then press tab to go to edit mode and you can select this little ball here and go shift S cursor to selected. And then you take this one and go shift S selection to cursor. And then boom, it's perfectly placed. I wanna to go to edit mode, I wanna move it up like this and then in object mode I want to rotate it so it's roughly in the center and if you have rotated it and you still want to extend it you can press G and instead of Y you can press Y twice so that's one leg and then for the next one let's go to edit mode and cursor selected so now we can select this shift D shift S selection to cursor boom and let's rotate this again tab and you can turn on x-ray view by pressing alt Z and you can click and drag and G and Y, Y and just place it like sort of in the center. It doesn't really have to be super precise because, I mean, as you can see here, these are not precise, like at all. But it's really difficult to notice, actually. Now I want to offset this. Yeah, so that's one leg. No, it's not because we want it to be like this. Shift D. And then let's, for example, take the bolt, rotate it by 90 degrees. We can also just uh, do selection to cursor. And now if you scale down the bolt, we'll just boop. You know, let's actually uh, set the pivot point to 3D cursor. The hotkey for this is uh, like dot, like this. But uh, I have remapped this to Q. You can see this in my previous video on the second channel. So yeah, now you can press Shift D and rotate it by 180 degrees. And then I also like to offset it. Just remember to set it back to um, median point, which is the default. So let's actually rotate this out a little bit. 
So we get some uh, hips. I think that's cool. And then in the center of this, like, you can select both of this and go shift uh, S cursor just selected and go back to object mode by pressing tab and go shift A and let's make an icosphere and let's pop up this menu and set the subdivisions to four. Now you can scale this down, scale it down, scale it down and right click shade smooth. Cool. So this will be like a ball joint, which should be able to move in all directions. And then I want to move this up. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I want to increase the size of this. So go to edit mode, make sure to have X-ray turned on and select this and press S and then shift yeah, X, I think. Yeah, and then you can make this a little bit bigger. Let's just get rid of this and let's just boop. And let's take this screw can make it bigger. Okay, so one tip that I have when just adding screws to a scene is that let's say you're adding all these type of screws to your scene. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend having like just a few sizes so it looks like the screws aren't adapting its size to the robot. The robot was made using parts that was laying around. I mean, that could help with some of the realism if you want to have like a, some backstory or, or lore. So yeah, this is one leg. Mm, I'm not actually sure if this is going to have a bolt. It's actually just a super boring cube. So let's go make a cube. Let's scale this down and I want to just move it a little bit out here. The only purpose of this shape is to prevent the leg from floating. Let's say you were to zoom in here and there were, would be a floating part. I feel like that's a big no-no. There has to be connections everywhere nothing can be floating at least that's uh, that's an idea i have <laughs> so i want to actually join this with the sphere so just select this and select the sphere and just go press Control j we can actually try and see if we can do a bevel modifier on this yeah let's do uh yeah i think that's good we need to make um, one more model let's use a plane let's make a plane and if you like you can go shift h which just hides everything else press tab to go to edit mode Let's zoom out, let's hold down shift and press right click. So we're placing the 3D cursor there and go shift S, cursor to grid. Let's change the pivot point to 3D cursor and let's press E and R and then Z. Yeah, and then let's hold down control. Let's do 15 degrees and let's just press R and I want to do like this. So now let's turn on X-ray. Select all of these and press E and just move it down. Let's right click, set the origin to 3D cursor or geometry, it doesn't really matter. Alt G to reset location, Alt H to unhide everything. And let's set the pivot point back to median point. Now let's scale this down and let's go Control A to apply scale. Because if we didn't apply the scale, the materials would be weird. And then I want to rotate it by 90 degrees on the Z axis. And I want to rotate it by 180 degree on the Y axis. So it's becoming some sort of like a protection area. <laughs> the point with this shape is that I just didn't really want to deal with showing the joint in the middle here. I just didn't want to have to figure out the logistics of two legs moving and the yeah it would look weird. So let's set it to auto smooth and you can also add a bevel modifier to this and let's lower the amount. There we go. We can also add like a little detail here. Uh, you don't have to do this but oh by the way that's control B sorry. Control no, what? Control R. <laughs> and then you can just scroll and then you can get these cuts and then S and scale it on the X axis. And then if you hold down Alt, you can select this inner circle and press Alt S to scale it along the normals. So now you just add a little bit of detail here. So now I want to add uh, some springs inside of this leg. And I don't think that this spring is long enough. So let's actually just make another one. So let's go Shift A, Curve, Curve Profiles, Helix 3D. And let's just um, multiply this by three. Yeah, I think that's good. And let's lower the width, 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 width. Because it's much easier to just delete parts instead of adding. We can just get rid of this in wireframe view and just. So now when we go to Object Data Properties, we can hold down Shift and increase the bevel depth. I actually think this looks more like a phone cord. So if you press tab to go to edit mode, A to select all, you can press S and shift Z. And then you can just make it a little bit more like a spring again. This is actually a super dense mesh. Yeah, this mesh is super dense. So let's go to the resolution preview and lower it. Uh, let's set it to four, I think is good. Yeah, and let's do the same for this. Set this to four. Yeah, see that? It's basically three improvements. You can even do three on this one. 
and then we can set the resolution depth as well. See this? This can be three, I think. And then let's go Shift D and let's move it down. Oh, we forgot to clear the scale. So select this, so let's even do this and Control A, apply scale. Okay, so now let's scale this up a little bit. Let's duplicate it so it's one on each side. And then I also like to give it some randomness by pressing R and then ZZ. So this just doesn't look completely identical. And then this one as well. Oh, they don't line up perfectly. Let's place it there. Let's do this one, which should be here and there. There we go. I think this is a really cool concept that there is some sort of spring structure in here and here it's on the inside and down here it's on the outside. And I feel like it, it really adds up really nicely with the lighting when you have it in cycles. So now let's make the short one for the leg. So I think we should place it. It doesn't actually have to be super precise. Um, here and then here, I think. Sometimes I like to select the shape and just go Alt S just to see uh, whether the scale is correct. And this wasn't, so let's just, let's actually just take all of these and just go uh, control A and apply the scale just from time to time. So we know that the materials will work when we get those up and running again. I want to actually shift D and duplicate this one more time. So it's inside here. Then you can just go control and plus it will. I want to make like a little bit of a heel. I'm not sure if you can see it here. If we just take this one, delete this. I just want to give it a heel like that. Boop. Oh wait, I want it to swing up, you know? I think you should be able to just bridge edge loops. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And we also want a toe. Uh, let's actually just use this for that. Yeah, nice. That genuinely looks really cool, I think. Yeah, let's uh, take this bar. I really like this one. So we want to use this for the torso. Let's just move this up here. And I want it to be like sideways like this. I want it to be a little bit shorter. And then we can actually just move this up. So this is in the center. So now we also got it like this. What I think is important here is that we need to remember that these are like individual bones. So let's try and line these bars up with the bones. And I want to set the display type back to octahedral. So you can see that these are where the bones start, you know. So now let's set this here. Let's duplicate it. By the way, if you think that it looks like I'm working fast, I mean, I'm probably look working a little bit fast, but the reason why I'm able to work this fast is because I already made this. It's really easy to work fast if you know what you're doing. Coming up with this design took like so many hours of just scratching my head because I had no idea what I want to make, you know? But now that I just, I know all the parts that I'm going to use, for example, which is a, such an advantage, and I also know roughly where they're going to be placed. So that means that I'm able to execute this a lot faster than I was previously. I'm probably working 10 times faster than I was when I created this the first time. Okay, so I want to make these three a little bit thicker. So let's select all of them and let's press tab and let's just scale them on the X axis. We have some more screws, I think. We have some more screws here. And I want to actually, I want to duplicate this, place them here. And then let's take these smaller screws that we used earlier and let's duplicate them and place them up here. We have forgotten about the nuts, these ones. Yeah, these are good. Okay, nice. This is looking good. Also, one thing that I did is that I bent this a little bit. So it looks like there's made some room for it. And to do this, let's just go tab to go to edit mode and let's control R to add some more segments, scroll up, and then select this bottom part. And let's turn on proportional editing, O. And let's view it from the front and let's press G and then you can scroll to adjust this. So if we move it in here, for example, that looks really cool, I think. And then I just want to duplicate this up here. I can actually bring these along as well. Uh, shoop. Ba -ba -doop. Okay, nice. We need some more of these. Just place them roughly in the middle. It's not super important that these are perfectly lined up. The most important thing is that it just... It looks like there's something holding this together. I think I actually want to add something inside of this spring. Okay, so let's add a cylinder. Actually, 
let's add a circle instead. There we go. And now you can use select everything and press S and Shift Z twice. So it's scaling on the local axis. And then we can have this inside the spring. I want another sphere, I think. Uh, let's make just a big sphere. Perhaps two? Yeah, let's do two of them. Yeah, I think it should add two spheres and then we can just extend this. I think you can press GG and then C and it keeps going. Yeah, now we can actually tilt this up a little bit. We need to... Should we do one more of these? Yeah, let's uh, give it some more thickness. Let's take the heel and let's place this up here. We're gonna need a big screw. Let's do proportional editing. Let's go S and Shift Z twice. So we can scale this up. Okay, nice. So now all of these, I think they have, yeah, they have a subdivision of one on them. So these will look really nice. Let's just take this one and just move it straight. Yeah, let's just take this in here. <laughs> is that, is that legal? Like this? Yeah, that looks like it could work. This looks a little bit weird right now, but I think this could just help make it look handmade, that it has this weird whoop. I think that actually is one of those parts where you see like, oh, so someone made this with their hands and now they're it messed up a little bit. Could be. Or it could be an excuse for me to be sloppy. Okay, now this is coming together, I think. One leg, which will be duplicated into another leg, and then the torso, and then this will also be mirrored. Okay, so the shoulder, it's just um, another, yeah, let's take this thing. Let's just use proportional editing again. And let's move this down. Oh, perhaps this could be like, could we do one of these things? Proportional editing and uh, I mean, almost. There we go. Uh, <laughs> This is not working. No, 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 please work. Yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah, this looks like it was handmade. That's the excuse I'll use for the rest of the video. Bert on it here. Look at that. You know, I wasn't planning on modeling so much. That was the whole point of this video to just, you should be able to just slap together some parts that you find online and then you have a robot. But before you know it, you're sitting here making a commentary on some wannabe speedrun <laughs> situation. Okay, yeah, let's just make this point. Yeah, and then let's just do it like this. Yeah, that looks good. So now we can continue. I think I'm gonna use one of these again, but then I'm probably gonna use like some ball joints. Oh no, this has to be 90 degrees. Let's actually be super clever here. You can, you can actually just rotate it like this, 90 degrees, yep. Uh, let's make it sure it looks good. And then this one. And then you just go, let me see if this works. Bridge edge loops, number of cuts. There we go. And then the smoothness. Okay, good. So now let's, I think what I did was that I just deleted this. And then I just started turning this into something that could hold a sphere. Yeah, there we go. And then the point is you make a sphere. So the ball is on the bone and then this, is sort of holding the ball like that. That's what I figured out would be like the least problematic way. This can be duplicated like that, rotated 90 degrees and scaled up on the local Z axis. Nope, local X axis like that. So now we can do like this. Yes. So the whole point is that this is going to be able to move freely around inside this, you know, like uh, it will probably crash and intersect a little bit but it's supposed to be like a little bit flexible at least. And then for the arm, this sphere will be placed like this. Hang on, this will be 90 degrees. Press three to make it face select, delete the faces. And then what we do, we do this, 90 degrees. Now we connect this. I think we're gonna run into a problem. Yeah, so what I wanna do is I wanna just go control R on this one and then maybe on this one as well. And if my maths are correct, it doesn't work. Or, yeah, it's good enough. Let's do that. Uh, it's actually perfect. <laughs> I don't really remember what the fingers were like. Let's do this. And delete the faces. This is turning into a modeling tutorial. I didn't uh, mean that. Uh, or not a tutorial even, just a modeling video. It's just me 
modeling. But yes, now we're getting somewhere. Let's place this here. By the way, I'm using this video to figure out what the tutorial will uh, be. And uh, I'll probably have to reconsider uh, some of this modeling aspect. So much stuff here. Let's make it a lot wider. Yes, that's the shape I wanted. So now we can make the fingers. Let's go ahead and take this. <laughs> I'm using this toe thing for everything. I think I actually just want to do this for the fingers. And then toink. If you're good at modeling, you're going to be ripping your hair out because I'm probably breaking all the rules. I'm actually tempted to just call it the day with the fingers. I'm not sure if they should have like two joints. It could be cool if they just have one. I have forgotten the head. We're already on a modeling spree. I want to mix up the head a little bit. So I want to make another sphere. I want to place it like here. And I want to take this and just move it and press O. And then also, if you want the proportion editing to work, not work like this, you can set it to connected only. And it will sort of work like that, which is really powerful. Does that work? Yeah, we have this spine now. This is really growing on me, this schwung here. It feels like a designer choice. <laughs> and then I think I actually want to try and make a light bulb. Because now I think this is looking a little bit more um, coily. I'm not sure, there is some form of electricity there, I think. I'm gonna do a uh, UV sphere. If you just use proportional editing, you should be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, boop. It's surprisingly difficult to get a round light bulb, by the way. So I am actually going to use a circle so I can see where it should be rounder. Yeah. Okay, and now the important part, we're actually going to just uh, duplicate this and P to separate by selection. And then I'm going to just add like a a situation here. Hmm, the screw part. I'm not sure if I want to make it look like a screw part because it's just so much work and it's so little impact. Hmm. Yeah, let's just do it like that. I don't want to twist it. Or can I cheat and just like this? <laughs> I mean, it looks, it looks a little bit like it's twisting, but it's just whoop. And let's actually just add a little bit of a detail up here. Something like that. I want to add a solidifier modifier because if we want to make this into glass, then uh, that wouldn't work. Yes, yes, yes. We got a light bulb. So let's place this here. Mm, I'm not really sure how to connect the light bulb. Perhaps this could be used for something. Something like this. Yeah, I think this will be really weird. But what if we just try and make it work? Play some screws. Life is good. Okay, this could work. I'm not sure, but it could. We might have to add a ball joint here. Uh, <laughs> Very weird. But perhaps people won't really notice. Yeah, I don't think they will actually. Oh yeah, the gear, by the way. I wanna just delete this. And I wanna add a solidify modifier. It's easier to control the thickness. So now the bevel will work. Still won't work. There we go. Uh, for some reason that worked. Emerge by distance. So now what we can do is that we can do like this. And let's do like uh, one of these. Yeah, that's cool. And then I also want to do, so it's probably a faster way to do this, but it's easier to just do it than to find out how to do it faster. <laughs> there we go. Okay, nice. That's a cool gear. And now let's just slap this on the back here. It's literally just placed like this. But it, it sort of helps, you know? This one just has it. And I think it, it helps. Now we are going to... Ah, I forgot I had this one. Should we use this up here on the neck? Like on the back like this? Okay, there we go. And now 
Oh, perhaps we can even have this. Okay, now for the interesting part, which is certainly something that we need by now, because this has just been a modeling marathon. Oh, no, wait, this isn't uh, attached. I'll just do something really easy. Yeah. Oh, and of course it turns out great. Okay, so now we're going to do <laughs> is that we are... Oh, I also forgot to add a thumb. I'm not really sure how this will work. Can I just... Okay, I'll just do like this. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Oh, this works. Yeah, that's the thumb. Whew, okay. Now, I'm sorry for just being in a completely flow state there just talking to myself almost this is the exciting part now we get to make this come alive now we're going to parent all the parts to the armature so now we have half a robot and the reason why i haven't duplicated the arms and the legs or mirrored them over to the other side yet is because i want to change the origin point to be roughly in the center of these bones because then we can use a script to batch parent everything because in my last video the rigging tutorial video on the main channel I requested that people could make that script, and a lot of people did, and I just picked a really good one, which was posted on GitHub, so you can find it, link in the description. But before we use that script, we're going to have to prepare our mesh just a little bit. So let's actually go to material view. I'm just going to give everything the same material for now. I think this circle is actually the wrong way, so we can press tab to go to edit mode, A to select everything, and uh, just flip normals. Yeah, so now it looks better. So one thing to notice about the material from the Mechanical Creature Kit free pack that we used, go to Shader Editor, it's this one, and here you can see you have all these colors. You can, for example, let's select these uh, springs here, and let's go to Material Properties, and let's just uh, make a copy, and let's call this Brass, and then you can just click and drag the brass into the color. So now we have a brass color spring thing, and then let's just do this for all of them. Actually, I want to do the screws as well. Uh, and let's do the gear. Now let's just shift select this one at last. Control L, link materials. So now we just have some more interesting colors going on here. Okay, so yeah, back to the origin situation. We want to just make sure that these objects have an origin that is close to the center of the bone. So let's just go through these objects. Let's for example take these. So I'm basically just looking for objects that have their origin far away from the bones that I want them to parent into. I think this should be good and let's right click set origin to geometry and then I want to do it for these ones as well edit mode select the bone and go shift s cursor to selected select whatever thing you want to parent to that one right click set origin to 3d cursor so select the bone cursor to selected object mode right click set origin to 3d cursor so basically what I did is that I changed the origin of the objects the closest bone to their origin will be their parent once we run them through the blender add-on. An easy way to check this is to set it to individual origins and then you can just rotate it and see roughly if anything is behaving really weird. Yeah, I think this should be good. So now we're going to duplicate the entire side of this. So make sure you select all of these and press shift C to reset the 3D cursor and then set the pivot point to 3D cursor and go shift D to duplicate and press escape or right click and then control M to mirror and then X. So now these are all mirrored on the X axis. So now we have our robot. So here we got um, on GitHub made by Gentile. Thank you so much for making this. Parent to nearest bone. So let's just go under releases and let's just download this zip file. It's saved to my desktop. So I'm just going to go edit preferences and let's just install the add-on parent to nearest bone i'm using version 0.8 install add-on so now we want to parent everything but we don't want to parent these yet because i have some ideas for how to make these work better you can just press h to hide these and now let's select every single thing and hold down shift so the armature is selected the last and let's go object parent parent to nearest bone No. Oh, wait. It worked? Yeah, it, I think it worked. Pulse position. Hmm. Yeah, it didn't work completely as intended. I think I may have messed up some of the bone placement. Yeah. 
The script did exactly what it was supposed to do, but I have messed up the placement for this one. So this should be over here, for example. I'm just going to do Control Z. Uh, like that. Now I don't think it's parent end anymore. Yep. And now I'm going to do... I'm just going to quickly fix this. I'm going to move this so they are completely in the center, like that. And then, oh yeah, this needs to go... This one is a little bit lower. And then this one should be higher up, like this. This can be merged with this. Okay, I think this should work. Now, I have no idea why this was so uh, weird. I'm gonna just delete some stuff here. Okay, so let me try this again. Let me take these things and this, shift C, shift D, control M, X. Now let me just see if this lines up. Yeah, I mean, it should work. Oh no, I forgot to do this as well. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. A to select everything, object, parent, parent to nearest bone. Boop, that just works. And then post position. So the thumb isn't working and the fingers aren't working really well. Hang on, let me just hide the hands. Everything else is actually working. I'm just gonna manually parent the hands because there's a mystery why this just doesn't work. So the hands have been parented to this bone. Oh yeah, this is probably based on mesh instead of um, origin. So the entire part where I just went through and changed the origin of all the mesh, don't do that. You don't have to do that. So that means that we can reset this and I can just go through. So I'm just going to parent these manually like I usually would. So we still saved a lot of time using the add-on. Just remember, you don't have to change the origin for it to work. Yeah, nice. Now it works, look at that. So now I'm gonna add back this thing because I think this is going to need some special treatment. I'm going to parent it to this bone. Let's set it to rest position first. I'm going to do the same with this. Yeah, both of these, parent to bone. Yeah, I don't think this works properly up here, you know? But what I think we can do, select the, the cylinder and let's go constraints, add constraint, damped track, and let's set it to the sphere. And, uh, oh, that's <laughs> very unfortunate. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, look at that. Now the cylinder works as intended or almost, it's a little bit, oh yeah, it's a little bit off. Let's uh, take the sphere and set the origin to geometry. So now let's first select the spring or the helix and then select the cylinder and then go to object constraint properties and click this little drop down menu and copy to selected. So now we also have the spring. There we go. Nice, this is awesome. <laughs> I just want to take the light bulb and uh, delete the material and just give it a glass material. Let's set the roughness to zero. So now if I make a simple ground plane, I'll just make an aerial light. So now let's set this to cycles and let's set it to render view. This is looking really cool already. And if you want to make a, like a string or like a, the, you know the wire that is inside the light bulb, you can simply go shift A and make a curve Set it to Bezier, for example. Press tab to go to edit mode, just delete it. And then just zoom in and then you can use this draw. No, it's this one, the draw tool. And then you can just draw something like And now if you go uh, down to bevel, you can hold down shift and you can increase this. Move this around so it looks good. I think you can press A and then press V and then automatic. Yeah, <laughs> that looks crazy. And then just make sure they don't overlap. Right click. Uh, uh, set origin to geometry. Yeah, and now we can just place this inside of here. Let's uh, go to cycles and let's give this an emission material. Let's call this emission and let's set the surface to emission. We can set it to black body and then just crank up the strength. So it's like this really warm, uh, it's probably too warm, 2200. Yeah, it's probably too big as well. Let's just make it a little bit uh, yeah, I don't know. You can probably make something a little bit more interesting inside there. You should write something and be clever. And let's make a camera. Let's go Control Alt Numpad Zero, and let's do a vertical format. So 1080 by 1920, which is a great format for characters. Let's actually just scale this down. Shift D, 
Let's make another one back here. Oh, it's levitating, by the way. So you just have to move the floor up so it's not levitating. Uh, something like this. You can use Control B, by the way, to limit this. Set it to diffuse. I want this to have like a texture. That's a UV grid. So you can just go uh, Shift F10 and then just click New Texture. Let's like do 256 and just call this UV grid and generate the type, set it to UV grid. So now you press OK, you will get a UV grid and you have to press Alt S to save this. So now you can make a texture, set it to diffuse, set it to... By the way, if you're when I'm making a diffuse texture, I'm first setting it to emission and then diffuse because then the roughness will automatically be set to zero, which is much faster. <laughs> Image texture, and now you can just select UV grid and then let's scale this down so it's 0.75, that's good. Okay, nice. Now let's uh, tweak the light. I never know what I'm doing when I'm tweaking the light. I just uh, go with the flow. Notice how I'm trying to make the light come from behind the, I don't know, this line. I've talked about this in another video. Okay, and then I want to get to this node editor. Let's go shift A, color, hue saturation value. I just want to lower the saturation a little bit. And then I think I want to do like this. Let's just add a simple point light in front of this guy. Yeah, there we go. And I want the backdrop to be a little bit darker. And let's get rid of this light. It's a little bit more dramatic. No, let's just make it weaker. And then you can right click and set the depth of field distance. And uh, let's set it to one. Yeah, let's just do a test render at 256 samples. And then I want to use nodes. Let's do a little bit of a, I, I just do the same stuff all the time. You probably know this. It's just to get it up to up and running, you know. Huh. It's loading. I think I'm just gonna render it out as an animation now. If you want to see how I render out an animation. Yeah, so in this video, I uh, basically show you how to export from Blender in EXR to DaVinci Resolve. And just use some... The, the workflow I use. So basically, even though I'm only rendering out a still image today, this is what I'm gonna be doing when I've stopped the recording. <laughs> yeah, this is horrible. I recommend that you do something better here. I can recommend doing like metal up here and then it starts glowing and then it should be much brighter, I think. So um, that's a light bulb guy. I'm not sure what the final result of the tutorial will be because I'm recording this before I'm recording the final tutorial. But I feel like this is actually quite similar to this. Oh, I like this better, but let's not compare too much. Let's just uh, create whatever we want, you know? So yeah, this is now ready to be exported as an animation. I would probably just go to output properties and under output, I would find my folder. Yeah, let me actually just show you. I'll make a render folder. I'll call this Macman render version one. And I would export in OpenEXR DWAB. I, f <laughs> I forgot to parent this light bulb string, by the way, to the but that's just a simple parenting to the bone. You know how to do that. So yeah, this video ended up being a lot longer than I thought it would. I have been rambling and modeling and it was supposed to be kit bashing. But uh, yeah, I'm actually really happy with the end result. That's how to make something like this using only free assets. Now I'm going to make the um, full tutorial, which is going to be posted before this video. So that's probably a little bit weird, but uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.